Hello, welcome to the second video for Edexcel IEL Physics Unit 5, January 2019. Uh, let's start. Question number 16. The energy source for a main sequence star is, of, is the fusion of hydrogen to helium in the core. Scientists have been unable to develop this uh, process to produce a viable source of energy on Earth. Explain why fusion is viable source of energy for stars but has yet to be developed as a viable source of energy on Earth. In your answer, you should refer to the condition uh, necessary for the fusion to occur. So condition necessary for the fusion to occur, there are two necessary conditions. Number one is the high density you need, high density of the material and the second one is uh, the high, uh, high energy or high temperature. The reason is uh, fusion is basically a, a nuclear reaction in which two smaller nuclei fuse together to form a larger nucleus. So you need high amount of energy or high temperature so that the nuclei, nuclei can overcome electrostatic repulsion and they can fuse together. Moreover, they need high density so that there are uh, sufficient collision and uh, uh, to, in order to get sustained fusion reaction. So two, two, two important conditions. Therefore, we can say that in stars, we have a high amount or a large gravitational force that can produce high density and high temperature. So we have a sustained fusion reaction in stars. But on, on the surface of the Earth, it is impossible to contain the material uh, for, for fusion reaction because if during the fusion reaction if material collide with the wall of the container or with the container you can say uh, the temperature is going to drop that cannot produce a sustained fusion reaction and, and even there is a chance of melting of the container Question number 17, a student determined the count rate near a radioactive source. She used a, an americium source, which is an alpha emitter. The student connected a detector to a counter. Explain why detector should be positioned a small fixed distance from the source. So this distance should be small. The reason is because alpha particles have very small range in air. So it is possible that alpha particles after emission cannot reach to the detector. So distance should be small and uh, it should be fixed because the count rate depends on the distance. If you change the distance then count rate will be vary. The student measures the count for two minutes and divide this count by 120 to determine the count rate. Explain two modifications to the student's method that would improve her value for the count rate from the source. A typical question of count count rate and radioactivity if you need to improve your 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 reading or calculation. So the first first technique in this is uh, you should count the background radiation and subtract it from your measured count rate to get the uh, accurate count rate. And then uh, you can repeat your uh, uh, count rate, multiple reading and use average value. Question number 18. In 1967, uh, Jocelyn Bell discovered the first radio pulsars while uh, she was uh, a research student at the University of Cambridge. These uh, astronomical object emits pulse of radio waves at a regular interval. The graph shows the variation in intensity of the radio waves received from the pulsar. Use graph to show that the frequency of pulsing of radio waves from the source is between 0.7 to 0.8 hertz. So we are giving a waveform and the time axis. A typical question you need to find the time for number of waves and divide it by number of wave to get the time. And then f equal to 1 upon t can give you the frequency. So it's your choice to choose the number of waves. But uh, here, for just for example, I'm choosing uh, like from here one wave and then two wave something like that and if you see the time for that 
initial wave starting wave that I'm choosing here is 1.5 approximately and this is uh, 4 greater than 4 so it is around 4.2 or 4.3 that means I can find time is uh, 4.2 minus 1.5 divided by total number of waves here 2 so I have the time time here is 1.35 1.35 second and then if you do f equal to 1 upon t then frequency would be equal to 0.74 hertz the pulsing frequency was thought to be too high to have been produced by anything as large as a star like sun consider the sun to be rotating with that frequency about an axis through its center as shown calculate the speed of the point on the sun's equator if it rotates with that frequency or this frequency diameter of the sun is given so you need to find the speed it is a, uh, a circular motion so speed of the uh, speed or linear speed is v is equal to uh, r omega and r is the uh, radius of the of the sun and you can divide uh, by 2 to get r and omega is a, is a angular frequency or angular velocity in terms of frequency so you can write v is equal to r into 2 pi f and the frequency is 0.8 hertz so you can substitute all the values so v would be equal to 3.25 into 10 to the power 9 meter second inverse this is the velocity of the point at the equator here state why the sun could not be rotating at this frequency the reason is the velocity you calculated is 3.25 into 10 to the power 9 uh, meter second inverse which is greater than the speed of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 that's why uh, it is not possible the Sun actually rotates with the much smaller frequency given in B and the maximum speed of the point on the Sun's equator is 4 10 to the power 3 light emitted from the center of the Sun with wavelength 5.9 10 to the power minus 7 meter is observed on the Earth's, uh, Earth as a line in the Sun's spectrum the wavelength of this line differs slightly from 5.9 times power minus 7 when light emitted from A or B is analyzed. Explain why. Now if you see that uh, in the diagram the sun is rotating in that way. That means the point B seems to you know come closer and A will be moving away. So we have a blue shift here and we would have a red shift here. That's why due to Doppler shift we can have a small uh, difference uh, in the light received from A and B. Calculate the difference between the wavelength of the line observed in the spectrum A from A and the line observed from spectrum B. We need to find change in wavelength or the Doppler shift basically. So the formula for Doppler shift is, uh, is, is, is V upon C is equal to delta lambda over lambda and delta lambda is called Doppler shift that's what you need to calculate and this delta lambda is Doppler shift change in wavelength due to motion of one object so delta lambda would be equal to uh, V lambda upon C so V is uh, 4 into 10 to the power 3 uh, lambda is 5.9 into 10 to the power minus 7 divided by C is 3 into 10 to the power 8 and delta lambda would be equal to 7.87 into 10 to the power minus 12 meter this is the delta lambda lambda uh, wavelength shift is due to only one point and between A and B so difference between A and B you times 2 2 times all delta lambda so your answer would be around uh, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter. This is the difference between A and B.
The Hipparchus satellite was the first satellite used to determine the accurately the position of stars. Data from for more than 100,000 stars was collected by Hipparchus using parallax method. A state what is meant by parallax method? Parallax. So parallax in astronomy is, or in generally, parallax is apparent change in, 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 in position of an object due to uh, the background object. A typical definition of parallax. A star A is twice as far away from the Earth as a star B. Describe uh, what would be observed when trigonometric parallax is used to determine the distance of these stars from the Earth. Remember, the uh, parallax angle, let's suppose theta, is uh, inversely proportional of D. So higher the distance, is smaller the angle. So if the star A is twice uh, as far as from B, then theta would be half. So, so you can say that for uh, star A, the parallax angle will be half of that of the star B. It was intended that Hipparchus uh, would orbit the Earth directly above the equator with the period of 24 hours. Explain why this orbit was used. So if the period of an orbit is 24 hours, it is a geostationary orbit and it is uh, quite suitable because of uh, uh, the, the, the uh, satellite can be located easily and can be communicated with the satellite in an easy way. So you can uh, write answer like that. Calculate the height of the satellite above the equator when in the orbit. So this is the Earth and this is the satellite orbit and you need to find that height. This is H. So you can use uh, universal gravitational law F equal to G M M over R square and this small r is the distance from the center of the Earth like that. This is R. So but this gravitational force uh, behave as a centripetal force because angular velocity is given and time period is given. So I'm using uh, m r omega square. This is centripetal force and omega is 2 pi by t. So if you use omega here and you can rearrange this whole equation for r as r cube is equal to g m t square by 4 pi squared and you can substitute all the values g is universal gravitational constant from your data sheet or formula sheet you can find the value of g and mass of the earth which is this and t is the time period 24 hour and uh, 4 pi square and uh, you can find r from here if you find r this r would be equal to 4.23 into 10 to the power 7 meter but we need to find the height and the height h would be equal to r minus radius of the earth and this is the radius of the earth here so h would be equal to 3.6 into 10 to the power 7 meter D. A Hirschsprung Russell HR diagram for a star cluster in our galaxy is shown. The star cluster consists of a main sequence of star and a group of a red giant. Okay, so this is temperature. Complete the scale on the temperature axis. Remember for HR diagram, if you move rightward, temperature decreases. So if you see, we have an equally distributed interval. So for the lowest temperature is around 2500. So you can say that it should be around 2.5 into 10 to the power 3 and if you go that, that side so you can double that number and you can say that it is around 1 into 10 to the power 5. It's just a symmetry of this scale, something like that. Explain how we know that red giant stars are very uh, are large in the size. If you see the position of uh, the, the uh, red giant in the HR diagram, so this is luminosity, this is temperature axis. These are the position of red giant. So red giant have uh, high luminosity and low temperature. 
and you can say that according to Stephen Boltzmann, luminosity is equal to area into sigma into T4 and uh, area is uh, luminosity upon sigma T4 and clearly you can see that high luminosity so higher the area low temperature higher the area that's why they are large in size so you can uh, justify and you write the comments at the end explain how this diagram shows that the star cluster is neither very young nor very old if you see your diagram you are given uh, main sequence star that means uh, uh, the star is uh, the cluster is young but not very young why because you have a red giant star so some main sequence have evolved to the red giant so that's it is young but not very young next uh, you don't have any white dove here that means uh, no uh, red giant have evolved to the uh, white dove that means it is uh, old but not that very old because of the absence of the white dove Thank you very much and have a nice time.